Hello, little rumble character. What can you show me in televisions? Well, sir, we have a wide range to rent or buy at low prices, and they're all covered by our Rumbelow's bond. Look, I'm on telly. Our bond gives you free delivery wherever you live. Wow, this set fits me perfectly. Free service for a year. Hi. How do you keep popping up all over the place? Because I'm on videotape. Ah. Yes, first I'm here, then I'm here. So you were. Rumbelows, we save you money and serve you right. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? Um, very well, thank you. Would you like to introduce the podcast for our new listeners? Um, hi, welcome to Can I Pod With Madness, a podcast where we look at old episodes of Kuang or episodes, uh, I mean magazines, of um, Kuang and Metal Hammer. Oh, flawless. And um, we uh, look at them. Brilliant. This is great. <laughs> it's all gold, internet gold. Uh, um, this is. Could I was this, trying then as well. Could this be like our soft relaunch? Because we haven't recorded in ages. So, so this it's is. It's not been that long. No, it's like beginning of February we last recorded. Oh, well, we've been to see some bands that are relevant. Yeah, well, in, in, let's get, since let's then. get into it. Let's get into it. What have we, what have we been well, doing? Well, well, since we've been then, what the events of the season we've missed it was it was Steve Tyler's birthday. Oh, yeah. And he was, I've forgotten how old he was now. <laughs> um, hold on, let me look. Um, da, 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 no, no, I've put... accidentally clicked on Steve Taylor. Okay, so Steve Taylor? Steve Taylor is an English author and lecturer researcher in psychology who has written many books on psychology, spiritual, spirituality, as well as books of poetry. How old he? He is 56. So if we go on to the person that I was trying to... I've got fat fingers. Um, try again. He was 76. 76. So he's 20 years the senior of Steve Taylor. Steve Taylor. And what did we do on Steve Tyler's birthday? Um, we had a birthday party for him and um, he didn't show up, which was rude, but also understandable. Um, why are people also searching for Willie Nelson? Uh, Liv Tyler, Joe Perry, Amy Preston, which I think is a sibling relative or something, isn't it? But Mia Tyler, blah, blah, blah. Willie Nelson. Why? <laughs> Mind you, is it just that he's trending? Why is he trending? He's 90. Willie, Willie is. Um, on 29th of April, he's... Um, and he's on tour. He's on tour. He's 90 and he's on tour. 90. Ninety, wow. So, um, wow. I mean, it's, it's shown me now. People also search for Lionel Richie, who is seventy-four. Right. Um, oh, younger Alvin than Chess. Steve Tyler. Younger than Steve Tyler. Yeah. Okay. And um, Dolly Parton's the only interesting person who's then Kenny Rogers. Then it's going on to a bunch of people I don't know because. It's gone down a kind of westerny route, I think. Oh, uh, Snoop Dogg, <laughs> and Snoop. Bunny Little, um, who is uh, 52. Right, okay. Same age as me. Yeah, well... I didn't realise I was the same age as Snoop. That's made you a lot cooler. <laughs> I don't know if I can claim that as making me cooler. Dr. Dre's 59. Is he? Yeah. Oh, come on. Mad. Uh, 50 Cent, do you want to know how old 50 Cent is? 50 Cent a young'un. 48, young'un. Ah, oh. baby. Uh, Ice Cube is 54. Um, Eminem is young'un. 51. <laughs> baby. <laughs> Little tiny baby Eminem. 51. So everyone's late 40s, early 50s. Is that what you're saying? Um. Yeah. Okay. Um, Drake, no one cares. Join us next week. We'll right. be counting Sorry. down <laughs> the ages of your hip hop stars of yesteryear. Um, well, but also, also, yeah. Um, Steve Tyler's birthday. We put up our f oh, top right. five. Forgot didn't we? that was what we were talking about. We put, we put up our Aerosmith faves. I created a tangent and I went down it and I got lost. Yeah. In Eminem's age, fifty-one. 
So do you remember your Aerosmith faves? Yes. So Jay did. Yeah. The other side. Yeah. Um, head first. Yeah. Um. Oh no! Actually, that's not the order that you no, gave me. No, it's not the me. order. Oh, okay. I can't remember the last two. Last. Young lust. Young lust, and I'm looking over at your permanent vacation at number oh, okay. four. Right. Okay. So yeah, Jay did at five. Fine. Permanent yeah. vacation, head first, other side, and young lust. And I had. I don't, do you know what? I know I put young lust as number one, but I think the other sides are close. Close number one. Well, it can shift around day to day, can't it? It can. It depends what mood you're in. If you, you know, if you want to feel all maudlin, you're not going to listen to that. So mine were fine, F I N E, yeah, at number five. Love in elevator at number four because I'm basic. Uh, number three, basic. same old song and dance. Number two, young lust, and number one, sweet emotion. Mm. But you could go Good on choices. forever, couldn't you? They've got yeah. they've got some they've got too many hits. Yeah, and we could talk about the rock and roller coaster for a moment. <sighs> yeah, but R.I.P. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the rock and roller coaster was a ride in um, Disney in America and Disney in Paris. I don't know about anywhere else. And um, it was a really good roller coaster, um, but played Aerosmith while you were going round and while you were queuing up. Um, you queued up and it was you were meant to be like uh, you just stumbled upon their recording session and then they their recording stuff and then oh my god they turn around and start talking to you and then that's all you know like hey you know you're going on the roller coaster they don't say that that's, that doesn't that's not what happens but it's the, that's the basic hey, just, hey wait a minute wait a minute what, we can't leave these people here like this we can't oh Come on, you know how we feel about our fans. Yeah, yeah that's no. right. Well, guys, what do you expect me to do? Send them all with you? Yeah. Hey. Hey. Wait a minute. I love that idea. How about some backstage passes? And then outside was a big uh, guitar, which was really cool. And then the neck of the guitar turned into the track of the roller coaster. And then as you're queuing up as well, there was it was a bit like Planet Hollywood slash Hard Rock where there was Gold stuff. discs. You know, guitars, memorabilia, yeah, um, legit memorabilia, not fake memorabilia. And then the actual roller coaster itself was designed like a limo, um, because you go into like a rock show, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it's really cool. And I, th I believe, I mean, I don't know, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, if you could be even bothered to do that, but I think it might have been the first one to start at three G's, right? Not to be mistaken with. On your phone. Right. 3G force um, when it sets off. I don't think it's 3Gs all the way around, but as you set off. Um, but yeah. But now in Paris, that is the um, Guardians of the Galaxy. No, no, it's uh, Avengers. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I'm yeah. Right. And you've got a Avengers. robotic Iron Man outside telling you about the mission. You've got Captain Marvel on it, a screen. It is. They basically tried to make it up to date by just saying, it's Avengers. And you're like, all right. And then they, and I, I, I'm a big Marvel fan and I'm not dissing on Marvel, but the, the effort they've made to change it from the rock and roll coaster to Marvel is minimal. They may as well have just kept it the rock and well, roller actual, coaster. No one's ride. gonna go on it and go, like, oh, I'm not gonna go on this roller coaster because I don't understand what Aerosmith are. They're gonna see a guitar. Everyone knows what a guitar is. Everyone wants a roller coaster. Get over yourselves. Um, they should have just kept it as is. Well, I think they they made some effort. They've got a, like a robot Iron Man and they've got like actual Captain Marvel talking to you on the screen. So they've they've gone all out in that those bits, but the actual ride is just It's exactly the same. It's just exactly Although, the same. I can tell I'm older now because fast rides now do cause my head to hurt. <laughs> like they, that was, I never remember thinking, oh, my head hurts. This feels like a bone rattler. But now I'm old, it, I can feel every, every bump. Do you remember um, the songs that they used to play on it as you went round? Yeah, because they played um, Young Lust. Yes. And that was always the best one. It's a bit like Guardians now, because in America, Guardians has three songs, and they are September, 
there's a Blondie song and something else. You can look it up while we're talking because okay. in and everyone wants September. That's like the one you want when you go on it, but obviously you don't get to choose. You just go on it and it plays whatever. But when we were on Rock and Roller Coaster, you'd want that because they had sweet emotion as well, but that's too it's smooth. It's too slow. It's too... For like something that's like, yeah. that's like the ride and you you need a song that goes with that and um, that did. I mean, the, the first time I went didn't... on it, the first song that played was Young Lust and thought, yes, this is, this is what you want because it's really fast, it's really stomping. But then it went into... Like, they've got a lot of mid-tempo songs, you know, yeah. and Sweet Emotion, the main bit of it. It's just, yeah, you want something super that, fast, that never, Yeah, that never worked. They should have just played Young Lust the whole way around. Yeah. Okay, Guardians of the Galaxy, Cosmic Rewind. Yeah. Take off on an intergalactic chase through ch- space and time with Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, yeah. This is not going to tell me the songs, is it? This is It will. Well, this is DisneyWorld.co.uk. Well, Google, I know you hate... You, one of your... Biggest problems in life right. is you're, you're unwilling to songs. ever just Google what songs are on Guardians ride because for some reason you'll just Google Guardians of the Galaxy ride and right. expect to find that information. So I've Robin, got a long, long ass list. No, there's, there's, I'm, I think there's three songs. Well, there's a lot more than three. I think you're wrong. Everybody okay. wants to rule the world. Oh, is that why that's been used on loads of reels? That makes sense. Uh, Conga, Disco because, Inferno, One Way or the Other, that's the Blondie song. Right. I ran but Flock I'm, of Seagulls. No, that makes sense because maybe they go through phases and end up having three at a time or something because on lots of reels now, people are using the Everybody Wants to Rule the World. Right. But, um, and I thought, why the, why the hell is this suddenly popular? I mean, it's a good song, but... So is it like Star Tours in that... You get a combination, but you don't get everything. I think so. Because there's a lot of songs where I can imagine. Free Ride, Moon Age oh, Daydream. Free Ride would be good, wouldn't it? Yeah, Creep. Oh my God. Like Creep by Radiohead. Is it? <laughs> Why would, like, I you don't. You don't want my house going to bring you down, innit? Who picks these songs? <laughs> I, if, if Blondie came on, no offense, I'd get off. <laughs> I don't think you can get off. I'd get off. So, what else have we done? Since we last um, saw you. So we've been to see Saxon, Uriah Heep. And Judas Priest. Judas Priest. Yeah. Do you want to give us your honest review of that event? Uh, yeah. I, like, the whole thing was really good, but I really enjoyed Saxon. Yeah. And... I never had an opinion on Saxon before. Never listened to them. Did, did you know? Did you know any of their songs? No. no, no, no. Just really enjoyed it. They just so kicked ass. Put, put on a really because I hate support acts. <laughs> and I know they weren't really support acts because it was like three people. But I, I sort of despise support acts because going to concerts makes me feel generally quite stressful. Any stressful. Stressed. Makes me feel stressed, yeah. <laughs> and so I'm just kind of waiting for the main act to come on. And until then, I can't even remotely think about relaxing. And so it just feels like an irritant to have something on before where I'm meant to react to something. And so... That's generally bands where you don't know them, isn't it? If it's like three classic rock bands on the same night, you can't really no, go I, wrong. No, I know. But... Um, Saxon were really good. They were brilliant, weren't they? Yeah. Make some fucking noise, Yorkshire. <laughs> yeah, you bastard. They, they didn't say that, and I don't know what that was, except that I just wanted to say it. Um, and you, the, the, your eye heap and Judas Priest were really good. Yeah, your eye heap did not play the wizard, so I was a bit upset. But you know, they did play Gypsy, and they did play um, Easy Living. You see the big hits. <laughs> And that's exactly what it sounded yeah, like. No, pretty good. And Rainbow Demon. Rainbow Demon. 
Demon in the rainbows. I vividly remember when Alice Cooper used to do a show on radio, on Planet Rock Radio. Is it called Planet, it's Planet Rock, isn't I don't it? Know, Granddad. And he played um, Rainbow Demon and he really made fun of the name <laughs> Rainbow Demon. I'm a Rainbow Demon, and he kept saying. That's but, pretty funny. Know, if it's a demon that, I don't know, comes out of a rainbow, then what else? Well, and we're it, going to see Alice Cooper this we year. We are going to go and see Alice Cooper. And we're going to see Tenacious D this year. We're going to see Tenacious D. And we're going to see Heart. We're going this to see year, Heart. Which is um, incredibly. Uh, exciting for all three. Aren't we lucky? Who else are we going to see? Oh, no. I've forgotten. <laughs> um, At the end of the year. Don't know. Journey? I'd forgotten about that. You'd forgotten. Well, we, yeah, we got tickets for Journey. It feels like we've gone a bit mental with tickets this year, haven't yeah. we? Well, you know. But, I mean, you can't control how many good bands, because then there'll be like three years when no one plays anything and... Yeah. It just so happens that... When we get another pandemic. <laughs> right. Grouch and grouch your face. Um, did you know Journey are being supported by Cheap Trick? No. That'd be good. That'd be good. Yeah. Pop um, rock classics. We've not seen Steel Panther in ages, so that feels like that needs to happen at some point. They're going to come back round again. Um, but we did have some news that they're bringing Demolicious back, yes. which we're very excited about. Demolicious is one of our favourite uh, video series. So if you've not already seen it, so Steel Panther, obviously, you, you'll be aware who Steel Panther are. Um, they do some YouTube videos and... Were they on YouTube? Yeah, they were. Or so <laughs> stupid me. And... Uh, oh, Grandma, who were they then? They could have been on their website. I don't know. Um... They did a series where they were looking at science stuff and I think fashion, but never really got into those. But the Demolicious was the one. With, there's, I think there's ten episodes, and in each episode, they um, two of the band members um, listened to about three demos from band real bands, but unsigned and unfamous bands, and. Um, they sort of just make fun of them, but in a nice way. But it's really funny and um, definitely worth a watch. But they're starting that again. And so so if you do have a band, you can submit your demo to Demolicious at probablystillpantherrocks.com. Is that their website? I think so, yeah. I think it might be. Um, and they'll make fun of you. But, um, <laughs> it's what everyone wants. It's, it's we still in, qu We still quote... We, we don't have a single word or sentence in our vocabulary that isn't stolen from something else, but definitely um, Demolicious has imprinted itself in our vocabulary and um, lives. I've had general. syrupy wad. Syrupy wad. Syrupy wad. Um, it's just steelpanther.com. Oh, look at me, it. not expecting... That. Why did I get Steel Panther Rocks? I think they might have had Steel Panther Rocks at some point. Don't go on SteelPantherRocks.com because I don't know what that is. I don't endorse that page. That could be anything. Could be anything, couldn't it? Um, what else have we been doing? Do you, um, do you want to talk about That'll Be The Day? We went to see That'll Be The Day, um, which is... It's like a... It's basically like a variety show from the 60s. Is what it was. It was um, people in, uh, impersonating acts from probably the sixties to. I think the fifties, uh, yeah, from fifties up till yeah. the nineties, I guess. Some of them were really good. Yep, yep, musically good mostly, and there were some bits in between the songs. There were some comedy bits that perhaps weren't aimed at us, and perhaps weren't aimed at anyone in this century. No. Um, but my father liked it, so, um, you know, and that was the aim. But um, we, we have also got tickets to go and see the Drifters. So obviously a bit non-metal. Um, but if you do ever get a chance to go and see the Drifters, go and see the Drifters because it's the best thing you'll ever see. Hands down. Isn't it? Yeah. You look, it, Fantastic. You, yeah. 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 You, everything's gold it's all songs you know gold absolute gold they're doing brilliantly what are you moaning about just just Brilliant. go and see them yeah playing a lot of uh, down south seems to be a lot of down south things 
Well, that's where um, the money is. Yeah, I guess so. Um, but speaking of up north, um, in Newcastle on the, I think, 13th and 14th of um, April, next weekend, uh, you can go to Comic Con. Um, I know it's not said like that. Um, go to Comic Con in Newcastle, and you can see Billy Worth and James and Newlander uh, of and the Lost Boys. Fame. I don't know why we're not going, and I am sort of thinking, should we go at least for a day? I don't know. It could be some last minute thing. Um, That's a bit of a trek, though. Isn't is, it? is it though? But is it though? But is it though? Okay, but is it though? Right. Newcastle, isn't it? I Haven't they know. got a near like a horror con near us that we've not been to? I don't know. I mean, we will look into this off mic. Yeah. <laughs> because but, you don't want to hear me frantically oh, Googling. Oh, by the time this is out anyway, that will camp, camp would have been over. Um, the weird thing is, though, it's it's a comic convention. So I just don't know how that turns into camp, camp. <laughs> Because that's um, just how most people say it. But, like it's one word. Yeah, but that it's I mean sausage rolls. Sausage rolls, yeah. I say sausage rolls in, in apparently a funny way, which I'm assuming is like your equivalent of me here in Kamakan. <laughs> and uh, PC World. Although no no one ever talks about PC World anymore, so that never really comes up, does it? Not really. I've not PC talked about PC hot. World for a while. Exactly. PC, is it even- PC World. PC world, but I say PC world. See, life's too short to put a pause in between PC and world. <laughs> PC got, world. You've got stuff to do. Exactly. Like go to PC world and Rumbelows and then stop off at Woolworths. Remember Wool- Woolworths and Rumbelows? Rumbelows was way before Woolworths. That stopped ages ago. Um, I think Rumbelows is where you rented uh, radios. It would have been like people who listened to Krang would have gone to Rumbelows 100%. Yeah. Um, so there you go. I don't know what back, tangent this has gone. Back in the days when people <laughs> rented TVs and videos. and Well, they they will have rented, um, I don't know. Should we have a quick, we have a quick look at what one below who are offering? <laughs> Once we're, again, we're a heavy metal podcast. Um, one below <laughs> electrical talk about, company. Talk about getting a um, fridge. Founded in 1967. No, 1969. <laughs> Lols. Uh, and uh, I saw 69 written. Oh, it was on my um, uh, battery the other day when I was taking a screenshot of something and I sniggered to myself. <laughs> Absolute child. I'm glad, I'm glad uh, to hear that. It ceased operations in 95. Oh. Um, so it was an electrical and electronics retailer that once rivaled Coe's Dixons <laughs> and Comet, I'll have you know. Um, <laughs> it's written by Mr. Rumble. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm looking through Wikipedia and I don't, um, it's not interesting. Um, several of the former Strothers, I'll, I've just realised you have to read the rest of it for this to make sense, but it just ended with the Rumble store in Whitechapel, Liverpool, had previously been the NEMS musical store in the 1960s when it was run by. <laughs> Manager of the Beatles. Right, that's not interesting. That's got nothing to do with Rumbelows. That's just the store. That... Yeah, but that's pertinent to our interests if it's music related. NEMS, I've heard of NEMS. Uh, Radio Rentals. It was sold to Radio Rentals in 89. Hey, how do I remember Rumbelows so well? Um, do you know what's really annoying? In the same era as Rumbelows, um, there was a shop once in High Street, not too far from... Um, where we were at the time, called It's a Gift. And it was like a gift stuff. I've told you this, haven't I? No. And um, it was just like a sort of shop that would sell, you know, a little... You'd go in to buy someone a present, like a candle or a notebook or something like that. It was never anything particularly interesting. Smellies, that kind of thing. Yeah. And um, I once wrote in a school like report thing that I went to buy a present that it's a gift. And then I remember the teacher marking that saying, that doesn't make sense, uh, sense as a sentence because she didn't know that the shop was called It's a Gift. She just heard me saying, I bought a, sh- a present that It's a Gift and then assumed that I just lost my mind and <laughs> forgotten how to talk. And because I was always a little bitch and never said anything back to anyone, I just accepted the criticism without going, well, actually, it's a shop. And I could have just said that and she'd been, she should have been like, okay, well, I'll, I'll 
you put your marks back up. But it's fine because that happened probably about 35 years ago and I'm, I'm over it. <laughs> it's fine. It's definitely fine. It's fine. I'm over it. So it's, so it's, it's fine. Should we, should we change the subject from high, high street? Yeah, can we just shopping? change the subject, please? Um, shall we look at a magazine yes. from yeah, the 80s? Yeah, people come here for? So, I think, I think people should know, though, that these um, this setup is brought to you by microphones that are standing on Iron Maiden sock boxes. So well, you mine's, got some, mine's fitted trunks. Oh, well, you got some socks and trunks from my mum <laughs> for Christmas. Uh, they're Iron Maiden, and they come in a, a delightful presentation box, um, really good quality box with, like, one of those... Um, magnetic shutter things like you'll know what the ones I mean um, and I just think people would like to know that our microphones are sitting on an I Maiden thing um, that we're looking at you we know? should I should find out my Amazon uh, associates link yes do that buy, buy <laughs> socks to us and give us some money I don't know if Iron Maiden Please, underwear is still available but it if it is be. we will yeah put the link buy it to our link <laughs> it's the same for you but we might get some money I, get, I might get like 2p but or don't whatever you should be happy that um we're even the things that our mics are resting on are metal that's that's my point yeah no that's my point because um people need to know it's a professional setup so what have i got for you this week or month we're looking at kerrang contacts 1988 edition so this was one pound 20 and it's the magazine written by rock fans Read your controversial comments. You can imagine how they're spelt. <laughs> on Anthrax, Motley Crue, Poison, Black Sabbath, White Snake, ACTC, and much more. Metallica, Let me Guns guess, of Roses, Axe Def Leppard. Is going to show up somewhere in it. <laughs> they, I mean, come on. Guns of Roses pinups. <laughs> Hundreds of pen pals inside. So awesome. I think we mentioned this previously. Basically. Yeah, you, yeah, you told me that you were going to contact someone. Yeah, I've, I've got some listener mail. Well, right. People, I couldn't actually convert them to listeners, but we've got some mail. Um, so I guess at the time, Kerrang! was selling so much that they could put out some money for old rope and just print loads of letters. There's there's no like oh, editorial. So that's that's com- not a proper magazine. Well, but, I mean, it is. I know it's a physical magazine you're holding. It, it looks like articles, but they're just long letters that they've received. Oh, it's like a clip show. <laughs> We're doing a clip show. But it's not letters. You hate those. It's not letters that have previously appeared. Mm. I mean, I smell well, bullshit. Well, per- perhaps, perhaps, and perhaps not. But you do get a nice uh, picture of Joe Elliott. Nice, nice picture uh, from Def Leppard. Um, He's got some nice jeans on. So obviously, there's this is all based around controversial topics. How are you spelling controversial? With a K. Yeah, right. Okay, good. <laughs> so I will. I won't read because it's mostly people ranting, right? <laughs> but. The first controver- con- con- contacts controversy, Coverdale's White Snake, a stateside sellout. So I've, I've read all of I'm this. I've got bars, have I? <laughs> and like the upshot of it is David Coverdale's gone to America. He's hired an American band and fired all the kind of British people that were in White Snake. They've all got their hair dyed blonde. And they Why o- is that a bad thing? They they only play songs from the nineteen eighty seven album. Blonde hair. Why is that a bad thing? <laughs> yeah, but he's not a natural blonde. None of us are. <laughs> so, You're absolutely living in a cr- crazy world. If well, you Robert think. Robert Plant is. So he says. Is Brett Michaels. Yeah, no, I think he might be. Um, Vince Neil. Yeah, he will be. Okay, we well, got beautiful men who are natural blondes. <laughs> so, like. Do you think Coverdale's White Snake is a stateside sellout? People are no. complaining that they go they go along and they're just well, they're just playing songs from nineteen eighty seven. They don't play their old seventies hits. Yeah, but, but they're obviously that's courting what people the. Want. It's the MTV audience, and they make MTV videos, and they have sexy women in. But you give people what they want. If those fans want to hear that, then suck it up, Buttercup. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, that's put that that's put that controversial yeah. topic to bed. I mean, I've just hit you with a, I think, a proper nineteen fifties line there. Uh, the next controversial comment is about Robert Plant. Wait a minute. How are you spelling controversial? Okay. Okay. Good. 
<laughs> Contacts is also spelled Wait. with a K and a okay. Z. Right, okay, good. Um, Any umlauts? No. Um, okay. No. No, they didn't go in for umlauts. No. Um, do you remember when you told your dad how Motley Crue he spelled their name and he was like, so it should be Mutley. No, I don't remember Mutley that. Crue. Mutley say- Crew because he was he correctly using the oh, well the- he does that a lot with words he's, he <laughs> pronounces Pingu in the way that you probably should pronounce Pingu and Futon the way you should pronounce Futon I guess I've never heard a Icelandic is it Icelandic Futon I, think, um, oh, I don't know or Scandinavian yeah um, someone's annoyed that Robert Plant is trying to disown Led Zeppelin. Um, and it's a very confused rant of a letter. Um, but uh, do you think uh, someone who was in a band, the band split up in 1980 and he's got a solo career, do you think he should constantly just go on Nine about Led later, Zeppelin? Yeah. I think he, if he was going on about it, I think he would, that there'd be an issue there. Okay. Right, I've got some. I've got some shit hot uh, contacts for you. Wait, how are you spelling contacts? <laughs> the K and the okay. Z. Okay, cool. Um, I don't know if we're going to get through all. The, there's a lot of good, good quality <laughs> content here. Single hippie busker thirty one seeks randy, ugly ish female to join me hitchhiking, busking around Europe. Must like sleeping out. Cold, wet, hunger, booze. No wimps, no virgins, no Madonnas. Hairy armpits are must. I'm genuinely speechless. That's what the from Gary fuck? Watson in Merseyside. What the actual fuck? What? There's a lot going on what? there. I'm, I don't even... What? What? So look, he wants you to go. You've got to you... like sleeping rough and... Being I think cold that's fine. and wet and hungry. Yeah, if, you, if you're a hippie hitchhiker, whatever, I get that. What? Uh, what? <laughs> All right. Right, okay, let's move, move on. on. I'm a 20-year-old metal headbanger into King Diamond, Exciter, Venom, Exodus, Slayer, Atomcraft, or Thrash. I want pen, pen pals, male or female. Don't bother writing if you're sane. Because this bores me. So all you insane <laughs> thrashers get writing to me. All letters answered. Sean Metalhead Fox. Oh, that's quite cute. Um, I bet he didn't keep up with all the letters. If you got loads, he'll have been like, oh, this is too much. I'm not getting paid for this. Hello, I am Paul Def Goddard and I'm looking for someone low core of the female sex. D-E-F. Yeah. Of course. To write to or meet musically, I'm into Manowar, Lemmy, Anthrax, Metallica, and the sort of stuff that blows Granny's brains out. Oh, I might, I might be old enough to be a Granny. Yeah, so we both are. <laughs> Hello, I'm Trish. I have blonde hair, blue eyes, and measurements of thirty six, twenty four, thirty six. I'm oh, Trish. 24, I'm 25 and looking for a Dio fan of any age. Looks do not matter, oh. but personality does. Oh. Must be yes. very nice. Oh. She's got very in capitals. We'll reply to all. Bring it on. That's sweet. Um, hiya. I'm a 21-year-old female into punk, glam and some metal. Faves include The Damned, Motley Crue, GBH, Mo- New Model Army and loads more. I'm also heavily into Garfield. Imagine him thinking I'd have a nightmare from eating too much. Me. What a silly thing. What a silly... <sighs> eat, Garfield, eat. Eat with all your might. Eat that pasta, eat it pasta till it's out of time. That's what? from Julie in Guildford. Garfield? Garfield, yeah, the cat. The cat? Well, I mean, she said it's Garfield. Garfield, what other Garfields are there? Well, I was just thinking, do I not? Is there a band called Garfield? Does she just mean the cat? It's the cartoon cat. What year is this? 88? This is 88. This is Ida so. Garfield. I mean, honestly, Garfield was fucking huge. We used to have, and we still have shown you those, um, scratch and sniff stickers of Garfield. 
you got one that smelled like lasagna, obviously. <laughs> one that smelled like spaghetti. One that smelled like popcorn. Uh, which always popcorn on a scratch and sniff always smells like sort of dirty socks. <laughs> and um, I can't remember what the other one was. It was four. What would that have been? Right, Ian, what would that have been? Let me, I'm going to have to Google this. Talk amongst yourselves. Do, 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 do you want me to give another nope. letter while you're Googling? Um, yeah, go on then. Are there any sane people out there? Well, if you, there are, don't write to me. I mean, this is a bit of a theme, isn't it? I'm a 15-year-old female, mostly into Thrash, Metallica, Testament, Megadeth, Anthrax, also into Crew, Sister, Rat, and anything else that blasts your brain out of your arsehole. Oh. Sense of humour is important. I will write to anyone aged 15 to 100. Capitals, no trendies, please. That's from Sarah in Rotherham. Oh, my God, there are loads of scratch and sniff stickers you can get, right? So we had popcorn and there's a chocolatey one and... Some sort of thing that looks like pizza, and then one that looks like chicken. Problematic. Um, <laughs> Garfield was not a vegan. Watermelon. I think it might be in watermelon. Well, he's not a oh my... <laughs> He's a cat. We should give like good um, hot vegan tips for the day. And Monty Bojangles um, cocoa dusted truffles that are vegan are very nice. So yeah. that can be a hot. That's, tip. that's your hot vegan. Look at the picture of the lasagna, though. It looks like it's in the litter tray, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Weird, isn't it? Was there not like not... a catnip? No, because that doesn't this smell. Is it Oh, my God. We should totally buy these. I would totally smell that with my... I can smell it now. After, so don't, like, 35 I don't, years, I don't need it, they're not going to... Yes, they will. You don't... Imagine the chemicals they use by then. They'll last. Amazing. Buy yourself some scratch and sniff... Garfield stickers, and I promise you. I mean, I get as I'm saying this. If, if it's not nostalgic, it wouldn't make any sense. Um, the popcorn one's funny. Look at his face. Look at look at his. Look. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we'll have brilliant. to put this on the Instagram. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. We could link to these and buy them through Etsy and give us some money or something. Just give us money. Um, this person's. There's one that looks like he's in a shit. What is that one? <laughs> what is that? Because it looks like a poo, doesn't it? That does it? look like a poo. What is it? Yeah. Chocolate. Oh. Um. It. I think probably like a Hershey's Kisses or something. Yeah. But in England, that looks like a poo. Yeah. So, mm, never mind. And not a very good quality poo either, like a quite a smoothie. Um, oh, lovely. So there's a, there's a visual component to this as well, and I'm not going to get into making fun of people. Don't, no, we're not doing that. But I want you to, like, look at this picture and yeah. describe it because... People have sent these pictures in. So at the top on the, there. On the top. Yeah. He thought this was a good. Which one's he on the one on the left? I mean, I guess. I think that's quite a good picture. He's wearing a leather jacket. He's got cool hair. He doesn't look like he, he was looks ready a bit for like the Bieber. photo. He looks a bit Justin Bieber, but that's, that's, not, that's not a bad thing. He's, I mean, I thought Bieber's it, popular. I thought he was he's a bit more Chris Needham. He's got <laughs> all commercialised. He's got a metal T-shirt on. And he's got a mate. His like, mate is just cheekily, cheekily poking around the corner. I think he's got his finger up to his mouth, so he could be smoking. Like it could be a that or he's. But it looks that's a nice photo. It's a casual. I'm just hanging out with my mates. I guess. A nice I, time. I mean, one thing we shouldn't forget is back in these days, <laughs> like you had to have a you camera 20, and you had, you had to buy tw- film. Yeah, and you had 27 chances or 36 if you really shelled out. And if you accidentally got it overexposed, there's. Tough shit. And then the bottom one, it looks nice. Well, he's, he's just, I mean, that's more what you'd expect. This is, oh, here's a picture of it's me. It's really, really cute. I'm sat at home. But it's the other all... one, it just looks like an accident. That looks like. No, I think mean... that's like, that's a um, photo on the inlay of your album. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. That's that's Josh Mosh Rodriguez of uh, San Antonio. Yeah. No, I think it's a good photo. So if you're listening, Josh. And then the, the one at the bottom is really cute. Really, really sweet. What? what? He's just sitting on the sofa looking really cute. Right. It's just cute. That's Duff Leviton, also West Mich- Michigan. Yeah. A lot of American people. All right. I mean, this, Did- is, this is this is a, another controversial topic for you. Pretty Boys Pummeled. Is glam rock giving metal a bad name? I mean, to to metalheads, yeah, probably. 
So here's a, here's a letter from Simon Jones in Powys. Glam rock is great, but what is glam? You always pigeonhole Guns N' Roses, Faster Pussycat and Poison together. But they are all different. Guns N' Roses are Aerosmith. Pussycat are Hano, Hano Vox. Poison a Kiss. Poison are the only pretty ones. The others look terrible. So that's that's like a broadly positive letter. <sighs> Yeah, I mean, I guess it's weird because you can't criticise someone for, for being pretty, but, like, Brett Michaels is pretty. I mean, there's a lot of criticism of people just for being pretty in this. Well, I know, but um, it's not their fault they're born beautiful, is it? But, like, um, C.C. DeVille isn't as stunning as Brett Michaels. But he's got magnificent hair. He's in it's all right. But yeah, it's, inter- it's an interesting question. I don't know the answer. I've always been into rock since I was a nipper. I've always gone into my favourite bands and waited to get a ticket in the queue for hours in the Aww. rain without food so as not to miss it. That's what I call decent, honest, loyal rock fan. A person who spends his hard-earned cash, brackets his dole, on his favourite <laughs> band. I've got some friends, well, so-called friends, who are into glam rock. It's like a competition with them, see who's got the nicest hair, who's got the best-smelling perfume, and who's got the biggest balls. Oh, it's weird. I've got some advice to glam rock fans. Pack it all in, because it's all balls. I'm sure people will agree with me that glam is ruining the rock metal scene. Let's stamp it out before it takes over. Is have it, like? Does he mean, like, literally the biggest balls? Is <laughs> Do men talk about your balls are big? Because I know you've got you you you've got big balls. It, it kind of equates to like bravery, but I don't think that's what he's talking about. Is he talking about literally big balls, L- large testicles? Yeah. Wow. Personally, I think glam rock metal is the best thing to do with the metal scene at the present. What is wrong with a band that wants to dress up and look good for their audience? Sweet. Tame me down, pussycat said in an interview in Rip magazine that men are a little too afraid of looking too feminine. And I tend to agree with him. The macho image is long gone and more ridiculous by far than anything remotely glammy. Glam bands look more professional, have a lot more humour involved. If, a lot more professional. I mean, that's, that doesn't make any sense. But <laughs> If you take yourself seriously, you're going wrong somewhere. True. Music without a bit of fun is like coffee without sugar. True. Bl- bloody disgusting. Even some more disgusting bands like Bon Jovi are oh. being brought into the pretty boy argument now. It comes to something when you get put down for being too good looking. That's from Rags in Cheltenham. I'm not sure what they're angry about or pro there. Well, I I think there's been a lot of letters saying let's get rid of pretty boys in bands, right. and then the uh, there's a lot of these. Please that are saying, don't, for the love of God, don't. <laughs> Never do that. I mean, it doesn't matter now because no bands have any interest. But, um, you know, on the off chance. Just don't. Everyone enjoys a pretty boy front man, don't they? Everyone does. You enjoy Satchel from Still Panther, don't you? Of course. Yeah. And why do you enjoy him? Oh, he's a good guitarist. He's funny. And... <laughs> he did once mention that he was a dungeon master. And? No, but and? Well, he's a good looking lad, exactly. isn't he? Exactly. He's a good looking guy. And you enjoy that? There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with it. You can enjoy Even it. My, my mum said, oh, yes, he's very good looking. Well, they, well then there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and if you can't trust my mum on matters like this, who could you trust? Bands such as Motorhead, Quo, Black Sabbath, Zeppelin made it without the pretty boy image. I mean, compliment? I think Led Zeppelin were quite you were pretty. You ugly bastards. You managed with a face like that. <laughs> The I'm argument joking. about glam rock is about as stupid as the fears at last year's Castle Donington about the thrash fans clashing with the Bon Jovi fans. I didn't see any signs of violence or hate between the fans. I like both, and I noticed how a lot of the other moshers were surprised at how loud and heavy Bon Jovi sounded. I must admit that I felt like having Bon loud Jovi... Loud and heavy? Well, maybe live, you know, crank up the All guitars right. and stuff. No shade, but... I mean, technically loud, as in it's coming out of an amp, and well, it goes. Listen, listen oh, to Philip right. Lewis because he was there. All right, heavy, Bon Jovi, um, heavy. Okay. I nearly puked when I heard <laughs> the totally commercial, commercialized, commercialized, oh, commercialized, slippery when wet. But Bon Jovi gave me one of the best sets of the day. Great, well done. <laughs> that 
really answers the heavy question well, that you posed. You know, he's not so locked in to being narrow-minded about these things. No, yes, actually, he's saying a good thing. I'm, I'm, on, I'm on board. Right, so this one's from Headbanger Oars from Manga. Why do you presume that glam rock may be giving metal a bad name? There is bugger all wrong with groups such as Tiger Tails, Fasted Pussycat, and especially Poison, brackets, Talk Dirty to Me is one of the greatest songs ever. No, the groups who are giving metal a bad name are the groups who can do nothing but spew out satanic rubbish such as Slayer, Venom and on- Onslaught. Okay, these gr- groups are really great musicians. Have I excluded Venom? But their lyrics are just so boringly predictable. I don't think I could... I mean, the reason I don't like Slayer is because they ruined Guitar Hero 3 with Rain and Blood being on there and I couldn't play it and I didn't want to play it and it was irritating. Um, but I don't think you pick out Slayer lyrics, can you? <laughs> is that in it? Look at that. Look at the soundbar on that. Ooh. We're, we're watching the soundbar as we talk. And that's been um, one fun thing we've been doing before we've been doing these podcasts is using our voice um, and the the sound waves to sort of make shapes. And like the only sort of shapes you can make is like a, you know, I've been, my first thing was trying to make a penis because I'm 14, but you can make like fish because, you, you know, it's quite an easy Profile shape. I mean, do you want to give us an example and no, blow people's No, 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 ears because um, I'll then keep trying to do it and it'll just, no, no one wants to hear that. But um, yeah, there you go. Well, look, we've been recording for 45 minutes. Oh my God. We're only 13 pages into Crank Contacts. So should okay. we draw a little line under it there? Come okay. back to this little. Part two. So part two coming soon. So look forward to, we've got some controversial topics. Wait, how are you spelling controversial? With a K- okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, topics such as Black Sabbath, mm-hmm. the Beastie Boys. So very, that's, that's very a bit controversial. Modern. And I've actually, I've actually got some mail that I'm going to read out. You've been saying this. This is like the biggest, um, what's it called? Cock Where, tease. Yeah, co- that's, a, that's the one, cock tease. You've been saying this for so long now. It's like six months. This will be as long as like the distance between us and these magazines when you finally get around to telling us what because someone said. Because we haven't recorded in like oh god months. Shut up, man. Um. So before we go, you got any yeah. deep cuts? Well, one of my deep cuts was um. Well, I mean, it was Shakadimas and Pliers with um. <laughs> Tristan Shout. Because the def- definitive version <laughs> of Twisted Shout. Well, because I challenge you to not listen to that and just feel in a summery mood and just be like, this is, I'm enjoying this, every part of this. So um, that's one of them. But also, R- Rush Hour came on the radio. Jane Weedlin. Uh, yeah. Um, and I don't know what genre that would be, but it was kind of, it was on Silk and Steel, I think. Oh, okay. So Silk and Seal was a CD I had of, um, I think it would have been called Soft Rock. It probably was Soft Rock. I Although think it, it in feels... our first ever episode, yeah, we, we talked about, talked about yeah. Silk and Steel. So um, it feels to me like it is. I'm not sure what genre they would... Oh, pop. They call it pop. But I don't know. It kind of doesn't feel like... Power pop. Yeah, maybe. There's something more... Than just your basic. Well, pop she was song in. She was in the Go Go's with Belinda Carlisle, and they were like a kind of pop yeah. punk. Well, sort of post punk yeah. band. So, no, it's yeah. a brilliant song. So, um, you got two there to pick from. So, Rush Hour and Twist and Shout by Shakademus and Pliers. Both okay. Good songs. Have you got anything else you want to tell our listeners to tie them over until the next edition? Uh, no. <laughs> we're back. We're back. We're hella back. We're sexy back. back. We're back. Yeah. We, I mean, we were away. You thought we'd gone for good. You don't get rid of us that easily. We've got a lot of magazines to cover. Um, I, cover to cover. Cover uh, to cover. <laughs> she's got cover. Yeah. And you said cover. I, oh, for I, God, I've got an, I've got a, I think we should do something from the 90s, like the mid 90s. Or the late 90s. I'm, oh, fuck off. Come on. Late 90s. That was well, like 10 met. minutes ago. Ex- 
Exactly. <laughs> we can talk about no. Slipknot and shit. Actually, well, pop punk. <laughs> pop punk was the thing, it wasn't it? Um, Mate, early two thousand. We pop can punk. we can do another one tomorrow. Yeah, we could do. Yeah, but we're going to leave you now for this week. Whatever week this comes out in, um, and so remember to stay, stay metal. metal. Also, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, Please follow do. us on Blue Sky, follow us on Threads. But genuinely look for the link for these I Maiden socks because they're good socks. And, and, and the, the pants right, aren't good. They're very I, comfy. I didn't get any pants. I got some socks. You got pants and socks. But the the socks are good. Yeah, they're all different I, designs. Do you know what? I've got a feeling in the ladies' socks. I, th- I think I've got three pairs and you've got four here. Oh, Why is man, that a thing? that's the pink tax for that you, isn't it? That is fucking pink tax, isn't it? Bullshit. But um, the box is really nice. So I um, think my box is better because it's got killers on. You've um, got Number the Beast. Right. But they, they're they like the sort of box you could keep knickknacks in. Yeah, you could or keep, dice. Or your passport and some change. Um, yeah. Or... Your backstage pass. A backstage pass, yeah, memorabilia. So you could keep that in your Iron Maiden thing, and they've got a nice like side bit, so you could put them on a shelf. It just says Iron Maiden. They all, they're all the same. It's a, so it's a quality item. It's a quality, it's a quality item. So check the link in the um, description. And if Iron Maiden enterprises Iron Maiden would want like to, to sponsor, sponsor us, us for um, um, pimping their socks and their pants, only say good things about all their products. Oh my god, their socks are so good. Um, hit us up, and, and we would love to talk about the best the heavy metal band. They're much better than Saxon. <laughs> no, well. But we like Saxon and you are a heap and yeah. Judas Priest. You said you are a heap like PC World then and Sausage Rolls. Heap. Yeah. <laughs> the heap, the heap. Yeah. We didn't we didn't talk about um Rob Halford's spangly jacket and the way he just sort of struts around on stage during the instrumental sections, like he's a sort of heavy metal shop steward. Yeah. He's not he, running around, but he's not staying in one place. He just, just bit, goes for a walk, bit doesn't stompy. he? bit stompy. Stomping a bit. Um, it was good, though. Yeah. He's still got it. Still got it. Rocking out. Yeah. Nice. All right. Stay well, metal. That, that, that was our Judas Priest review. <laughs> See you later. Bye.